Hello, it's the IT guys. We're back in Excel 2013. And today we're going to be having a look at the VLOOKUP function. So what this function does is have a look at a value and then it will look up that value in a vertical table as I've got here and it will return another value in that table. So what this is letting me do is letting me look up the item and it will return the cost of that item. So our notepad is 299. Also, if you update the table, it will update our cost. So let's have a look at how we insert the VLOOKUP function. At the moment, I've got it as a VLOOKUP function within an IF ERROR statement. Now, I'll start off by just showing you how you write a simple VLOOKUP function, which I've got highlighted. And then I'll explain why I've got this if error and what it does. Oops. So let's delete what's in that cell. And now let's insert our new VLOOKUP function. So as with all functions, we start by typing in equals. Then we type VLOOKUP. Now it's asking us for our lookup value. The lookup value is the value we want to look up within our table. So that's notepad. So it's in that cell there. Now we need our table array. This is our entire table. We want to start in the top left and end in the bottom right. So they're the values we're looking at. I'm also going to press F4 to put absolute referencing around our table array. This is important so when we drag our formula down it will continue to look up in the same table array rather than moving down the cells where it's checking. Now our column index number. This is the column in our table that we want to return. So it's going to go notepad, it's going to find this. This is the first column and we want it to return the cost which is our second column. So our column index number will be 2. If there was a third column on our table and we wanted the value from that column a column index of number would be three, etc. Now we're going to put a column, a comma, and we're going to have a range lookup. So if we want approximate match to what's in here, we'd put true, but we want it to be an exact match to what's on our list because these values is a drop down list based on them. So we want it to be exactly what's here. So we're going to click false. And now we can close our brackets. And this one's now look up notepads as $3.99. If I select another example, so blue as £2.30. So let's have a look now at the problem with using the VLOOK function without an if error statement. If I select nothing, then it will come up with not applicable, which means all of our other formula will come up is not applicable, which will cause problems if you're creating tables like this, which use multiplications, which is why we insert an if error. So to do the if error, we're going to put if error at the start. Oops, I pressed tab too many times. And it's now going to be looking at, it's going to be checking this value. So it'll do this, and then you're going to put a comma, and then if there is an error, then instead of displaying the value from our VLOOKUP function, it's going to return 0, which will stop all of our formulas breaking. And voila, that's that fixed. If the if error part, you didn't want a number, instead wanted a word to come up, like uh, check this, you have to do it within speech marks. So now there's an error, so it'll say check this. But obviously I want it to be zero, so I'm going to take the speech marks and check this away and place it in zero. And that's that done. So that's how you use VLOOKUP. Thanks for watching. And um, there'll be plenty more tutorials on our channel, including HLOOKUP, which is the reverse of VLOOKUP, instead of using a horizontal table rather than vertical. But for now, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. But for now, goodbye.